Hello, so we're having a look at legislation and regulation again. Uh, so just to recap, regulations are rules that are enforced by an authority and they are usually backed up by legislation. So obviously we're meaning that there's some legal action can be taken against those that break the rules. So regulation, these are rules that are maintained by a certain authority and they are backed up by legislation. If you break those uh, rules, that the uh, regulator is monitoring then you are going to be punished by uh, the law and that could probably come in the form of a fine uh, so just to reiterate legislation is a law or set of laws made by a government uh, and regulation is a rule or directive made and maintained by an authority and we have some particular examples that we had a look at here and this is used to correct the market failure uh, associated with demerit goods, negative externalities in production, monopolies and information uh, failure. So what we're going to be having a look at in particular today is we're going to be having a look at uh, certain standards that must be abided by by uh, firms in a particular market. OK, uh, so we're going to look at two different ways how this how these standards will help to uh, correct uh, market failures. So uh, first one, uh, first way certain standards would affect a particular business and help solve the uh helps of the market failure would be that firms have to adapt uh, how their business operates adapt uh, and then it's going to be adapt business activity so we're basically looking at how the business would have to adapt its uh, behavior based on certain standards and obviously if a business have to, has to behave in a certain way that is probably going to cost the business a certain amount of money because they're going to have to change what they're doing to a new process and that is going to come at a cost so there's two different diagrams we can use uh, to demonstrate how a business uh, would be impacted by these certain standards that adapt uh, I mean, the business has to adapt the way it behaves. So, first of all, I'm going to draw a quite simple uh, demand and supply diagram. So, price, quantity, uh, upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve. So, D, S, label the equilibrium, price, quantity. And as we said, uh, if a business has to adapt how it behaves, or the business has to change its activities, then again, it's going to come up a cost, isn't it? So we would see an inward shift of the supply curve from S to S1. We'd label our new equilibrium P1, Q1, uh, and there we go. And we can add in our arrows to show the relevant changes. So let's just talk through how this how this works. So. Uh, certain standards is introduced and what that means is it's going to mean that the business has to change uh, the way it operates to meet those standards so the business has to change its operations and that is going to increase the firm's cost of production so that increase in the cost of production uh, means that firms are going to be less willing and able to sell at a given price and time. And therefore, we see a reduction in supply. And that's why we see shift. Shift, I'm writing too quickly. Shift to the left. From S to S1. Uh, and we see a contraction along the 
demand curve. So what happens? Well, we see a reduction in quantity from Q to Q1, and we see an increase in price P to P1. OK, so that is how certain industry standards would impact a particular business, because a business would have to meet these industry standards. They would therefore maybe have to adapt their uh, the, the activities uh, and therefore they change how they operate. By changing how they operate, it's going to increase a firm's cost of production. And as a result, firms are less willing and able to sell at a given price and time. And as therefore, we see the decrease in supply with a shift left of the supply curve from S to S1. We see a contraction along the demand curve. We can add a little arrow in there if we so wished. And therefore, we see a reduction in quantity from Q to Q1 uh, and a increase in P to P1. Um, so obviously this uh, should therefore help correct the market failure of overproduction as well as overconsumption. So let's just add in some extra details. Market failure of overproduction slash over consumption and the reason why it does that is because the price rises and the quantity falls uh, so by doing so that should help to correct the market failure of overproduction as well as over uh, consumption okay uh, again uh, Certain standards may mean that a firm has to release certain information. So that could be another way we could talk about how uh, legislation regulation uh, corrects market failures. So release information. So, for example, uh, we can. I'm just going to draw the again, just a demand and supply diagram here. But you could draw the uh, positive or negative externalities in consumption uh, diagram that we looked at when we looked at information failure. So we've got price, we have quantity, uh, and uh, we're going to go downward sloping curve upward sloping supply curve s and d uh if we think about a demerit good here so i'm going to call this therefore imperfect information i'm going to label the equilibrium and then obviously if we had perfect information We'd have, therefore, a decrease in demand from D to D1. That'd be obviously perfect. Oh, a bit of a crossover there. Perfect information, and therefore we'd have the decrease in demand. We'd have a fall in price, and we'd have a fall in quantity from Q to Q1. Okay. So... Rules and uh, legislation and regulation may mean that firms have to relieve certain information. So if, for example, it was a demerit good, what we would see is that firms release the information with regards uh, the demerit good. So firms release the information, uh, economic agent... make more informed decisions and therefore uh, if it is a demerit good therefore they would decrease demand uh, and therefore decrease demand shift to the left d2 d1 and we see a contraction along the supply curve. And we therefore see a decrease in price P to P1. And we see a 
decrease quantity uh, Q to Q1. And what this does is this would help uh, this decrease quantity would solve or slash correct the market failure of over consumption so yeah we see there by firms having to meet certain standards and releasing information uh, economic agents can make more informed decisions please just bear in mind here that this is only focusing on demerit goods obviously firms may have to release information which may encourage people to actually uh, consume more of a merit good so i've only looked here at a uh, particular issue uh, Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, solving a market failure with regards to a demerit good. It could just be making sure f uh, uh, consumers are more aware of maybe what they're paying for, for example. Uh, and by making f uh, consumers more aware of what they're paying for uh, or signing up for, uh, ensures that they have the true picture and therefore corrects the information failure. Uh, so, again, it could be that uh, banks are forced to inform customers of interest on a loan, including any monthly payments and what that means is that obviously if consumers know the true picture they can make more informed decisions and by making more informed decisions obviously this helps to correct the information failure So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, particularly demerit good. It could just be the idea that people are informed of the true picture uh, due to firms having to meet certain standards and releasing specific amounts of information. So yes, when considering uh, legislation and regulation, you may be asked to talk about how uh, a certain type of regulation or a certain legislation may impact upon a business. So if it's a business has to change the way it operates to meet a certain standard, then obviously that's going to increase the firm's cost of production and obviously therefore they decrease the supply and that would therefore help correct overconsumption and overproduction. Uh, and also the standards may mean that firms have to release certain bits of information and that should therefore help uh, correct information failure. If it was a demerit good, then obviously people would consume less of the particular product. If it was a merit good, obviously the information would hopefully lead to people consuming more of the product or quite simply consumers have a better idea of what it is they would be actually purchasing uh, and consuming uh, and therefore uh, it helps to correct the information failure by providing them a true picture of what is going on.